Thanks a lot for inviting me, uh, for having me here. Um, I was thinking a lot of how I should tackle this topic um, because you can talk for at length uh, to explain all the details. So what I'm doing is I will show you for the first half of my talk um, a project we are working on which tries to make the world more sustainable using this technology, blockchain and other technologies. And I will open the floor for, for questions and discussion for the second half. And um, I'm really very open there, so you can ask all the things you are interested in. I brought also a list of words you might have heard um, surrounding all this Bitcoin cryptocurrency stuff. Um, we could also discuss what Ethereum mining actually is and, and stuff like that. So I will keep this very open and feel free to ask anything you like. Um, and with the first half I try to um, widen your horizon of what could be possible with this technology. And first, this is also something um, the blockchain could help. Uh, you probably, Martin uh, mentioned this in a phone call, and I researched it a little bit that the Red Cross in Switzerland, um, well, was actually betrayed. Uh, um, 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 they, they had an, an, an online tool provider company, service provider, and they just uh, yeah, got rid of 1.8 million Swiss francs. Um, nobody knows where the money is. Uh, the company is in liquidation. Bad stuff. Yeah. And just to say, the technology blockchain would not solve people who, who want to share other people, but it could help tracking the money. It definitely could. So that's just as uh, one example. I'm not bringing a lot of examples, but that was one I thought I should bring. More than many other groups of consultants in the world, you're trying to make the world really a better place. Um, sustainable development is, I would say, uh, at the core of what you're doing with your clients and, and through your self-understanding. So you're probably familiar with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And the thing is, why it's so hard to activate or incentivize larger groups of people, larger organizations, to act more sustainably. And I try to explain that coming from a very simple start. We do stuff, companies sell things, um, organizations pursue their missions, and we hope to achieve effects through the actions we do. Now the problem is, or the good thing about this, and, and that's what we hope for, a lot of the effects are the intended effects. But there are also others. Economists talk about externalities, external effects to what you actually do. If a company produces this and pollutes the river next door, the question arises who pays for cleaning the river because that's a negative externality. It happens uh, because the regulation is not there or it's there but it's not followed up. Um, the company has a certain understanding of where they put their money and where they do not put their money. So we have a lot of these examples, um, but not, also, uh, not only negative ones. Um, you can, it's easy to list negative ones, pollution, disease, deforestation, energy waste, noise, emissions, CO2 and others. Uh, waste of raw materials. These are all um, negative externalities which prevent us from running our world in a more sustainable way. But again, to be fair, there are also positive ones. And what we should try is to mitigate the negative ones and to increase the positive ones as much as possible. Um, but how do we do that? And to bring one of the overused symbols here, uh, but that's just a symbol, it doesn't have to be this Bitcoin. The thing is, we have misaligned, misaligned incentives in the whole system. That's leading us to uh, this route or sometimes to this route. And the solution idea is, let's create new ones. Let's create new systems of incentives that are just not here. Economists, again, would say we try to internalize external effects into the processes. That has been tried as well in the past, but not by changing the system, but 
by tweaking the existing rules or by, by ignoring some of them or by, by focusing on specifics, but it's, it has never been tried to really change the system because we think, well, we have our societies work quite nicely, we have this money, monetary system, um, with, with each nation except Europe have their own, their own currency and, and that kind of works. So how would we go about creating new incentives? Well, in the first, um, and, and if we would have like two hours workshop time, I would go through that with you. For which positive effects which you sometimes do today and do not get any reward monetarily, um, would you like to have one in the future? Planting, I mean, I'm, I'm very simple in the examples. Planting a tree, cleaning the river, doing other things that make the world more sustainable but are simply not inside the system. They are not rewarded in a systematic way. The same goes for negative effects. Um, for which negative effects should organizations, people, groups actually pay something and they do not pay it today? And how could we make them do that? And of course, um, and you're missing the, the, the cryptocurrency introduction, I, I understand that, we were coming to that later, but think of Bitcoin and all that is surrounded um, in this cryptocurrency discussion as programmable money. That means, that does not just mean that you represent a certain amount of money in a bunch of bits and send these around in a secure way, but it means also you can, um, you can design and implement whatever rules you think you can think of how this money should behave. You can make it disappear after 30 days if you think that's useful for what you want to do. You can make it um, inflationary or deflationary. You can, you can do all kinds of things. And um, that's what makes it interesting. Um, many of you, I would suppose, um, have some familiar, familiarity with local currencies, completely offline stuff, yeah? people printing nice colored pieces of paper saying this is something taller and it allows you to exchange goods within the area of Munich, for example. There are hundreds and thousands of these. Um, now we can do that digitally in a very easy and, 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 and um, uh, efficient way using that new technology blockchain. Um, now one question is still well, there are many questions open, but, but one is also crucial. Um, how do we measure that? And that's also part of the project um, I'm, I'm working on. Um, and our idea is let's use sensor data because we have to get this information somehow digital. Um, the Internet of Things is something that is emerging. Larger cities have networks where they measure em emissions, um, noise, traffic, of course, all kinds of things. Uh, you can gather these data. And, and use it for creating currencies. You can, um, so I could measure my CO2 footprint, for example, having the, the network in place and, and having the tools ready. Um, of course, this thing here, hardly, so usually people are not looking at it this way because it's basically a small computer with a phone, but it's a sensor as well. It has like a dozen or more different <coughs> sensors measuring all kinds of things. And in the future, we can expect more different sensor systems being implemented in this, or you can add on something. So, and that's personal. Nearly everyone has one. So we could start collectively measure data we couldn't measure before by just connecting the, net, uh, um, the mobile phones to networks. Of course, there are privacy issues. We have to think about how we do that. But the interesting thing is, it doesn't have to be a service provider. Um, <clears throat> Peak Facebook was mentioned, and the, the GAFA companies are, of course, very much interested in your data on your personal phones. But we can also do it in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, bottom-up, where people just come together and create these networks. The tools can be open source, the data can be either um, encrypted, it can be anonymized, 
it can be kept like it is because you want to, to create reputation and for reputation you would need to be able to show this is my data, this is actually my CO2 footprint. Um, so again, it's programmable money. You can design it the, in, in whichever way you like. The challenge is how to prove the correctness of the data in a, in a way that scales and, and actually works. So again, my simple example, um, I claim I planted 10 trees someplace. And I want to bring that into the system because it's beneficial for my CO2 pr footprint and, and maybe other things. How do I prove that? So there, there are two basic possibilities. One is um, hardware gadget, devices, sensors that somehow enable me to show that. So for example, there's a, the project that tries to measure CO2 capture using sensors they put into the soil to measure. Um, um, so the farmer um, brings their crops or whatever it is onto the field and they try to measure how much CO2 is actually captured. And then you have to trust the sensors, who produces the sensors, um, and, and are they correct, etc., etc. But you, you can do that and then you have a technology flow and a data flow and then it, it ends up in, in the system, in the blockchain system. But if you have uh, actions that are not easily measured by sensors where you would benefit from asking people, did it happen or is it correct this way? Would you agree that it, that's, that's true? You can also use um, the ideas of cryptocurrencies and, and related projects because I could ask all of you, um, did this happen with the 10 trees? You could look at it, maybe take a photo. And the claim I would put online digitally, Marcus planted 10 trees, could be attestated by you. Now the question is why should you do that? Well, because I give you cryptocurrencies for it. But then again, could you be bri bribed by that? So we have to figure out um, a system, an incentive system, that would invite you to participate but prevent you from bribing. And we can do that. I mean, it's, it's sophisticated, but, but we can think about uh, aspects like a reputation that would be linked to certain uh, currency uh, um, um, amounts. Uh, we, we can think about that. And there are very elaborate projects that um, are using more than one cryptocurrencies for what they are doing. So today we talk about Bitcoin, we start talking about Ethereum, um, but there are blockchain projects that inside their, their system use more than one cryptocurrency. So for example, there is a thing called Steamit, and you can actually start using it today if you want to, it's, it's running. Steamit.com uh, Steamit it's something like WordPress or Medium, if you know these websites, where you can post articles, basically, and other people discuss, make comments, say, I like it, I don't like it, etc. CMIT is the same. It just works with a cryptocurrency. So for contributing articles, you get cryptocurrencies. For participating in the discourse and voting and, <coughs> and commenting, etc., you also can get <coughs> cryptocurrencies. But the Steemit website uses three of them, three different types. So you have this Steam, which is this basic currency which, which you uh, receive and, and, and can give out. You have something like, uh, I always say, one is the, your, your normal bank account and the other one is your savings account. So you can put some of your Steams to this other currency and it takes some time because you make it more illiquid. It's like invest in something and it rests there, and it rep represents your reputation on the platform, which is quite interesting. And you also cannot just kill your reputation overnight by removing all the money all at once. You can remove it, but it takes time, it takes several weeks, and there is no technical need for, for, for having it take in weeks. It's just, they say, if you build reputation, it takes time, and if, if you want to use your, your reputation money again, it takes time to, to, to get it back into, into, into your normal account where you can spend it for Bitcoin or take it out of the system. And then there's a, th a third um, currency, and that's um, the most difficult to understand. I'm also not fully able to explain it at the moment. 
uh, because this one is pegged one to one to the US dollar. So they try to keep this currency of the same value, I mean, yeah, on, on, the, on the same value as the US dollar. And, and this triangle, uh, you, you can convert the, the currencies, you can convert currencies to Bitcoin and other currencies. So it's a very elaborate system, and, and there are more coming up. Um, people are talking about so called crypto economic designs where they say, okay, who, are, and that's very familiar to, to, to fundraisers, I would say, who are the stakeholders? You map the stakeholders, what are their interests? What are their exchange flows? Um, and how could the introduction of a token, of a crypto token or a coin, um, incentivize certain behavior in this uh, system? That's what we're trying to do with this project as well. So let me show you, and it's only one slide, I, I'm going to kill you with it. Um, <coughs> from the right to the left. So we try to measure externalities with sensors, uh, mobile sensors, sensor IoT networks, human sensors, or human sensor networks. Um, depending on the data, we'd like to store it. Maybe it's, it's um, um, live streams, then we, we are only passing it through, but maybe you want to store it because the data is useful and it could be sold later on or could be used for other things. So you have to think about, should the storage be fast or, or, or big or both? Then the proving was what I, what I um, explained earlier, the, the thing with um, how do I prove that I actually did something good, proof of good work. Um, then we enter this, this crypto economic system um, where we tokenize. Tokenization is the word for transforming something into these crypto tokens. Um, you can represent all kinds of things in crypto tokens. Money is just one idea, Bitcoin is just one idea, or, and, and the first application of this technology. You could tokenize rights. You can tokenize assets. <coughs> Instead of saying, um, I plant 10 trees outside, and in, uh, um, uh, I take care of this area of forest. We count the trees, it's 111 trees, and I take care of them. And if one year from now there are more or less trees, my asset changes in valuation. So you can do all kinds of things. It's really crazy in a way. Um, but what that makes possible is that the tokens, you, you can literally distribute the digital representation of the forest to all you guys. And all of a sudden 25 people would be interested that this forest is growing. Because through the crypto economic incentive system, you would benefit somehow at the end of the year, let's say, by, uh, by the forest growing. And, and you can think of all kinds of things. There are projects um, in Nigeria where they, where they uh, well, you have oil, more oil than, than water in the rivers, and they try to clean the rivers. How do you incentivize the local population doing so? And they're experimenting as well with, with um, crypto economic systems. So, and then what's interesting, and, and, and the final goal of the whole thing, at least for us in the project, is um, economists say that, that the problem with externalities is, well, they occur, and they are not part of the transactions. They are not priced, and they are just not visible in the, in the commercial transactions. So what we try to do is, with, with this whole project, this whole process flow, to make these externalities actually tradable on new markets decentralized markets for crypto and um, yeah so so it's something that doesn't exist today and um, we think that so it, it's, it's still a question of how, how we conceptualize this but the idea is to have different cryptocurrencies for different externalities which would also help, and, and that's why the project is designed this way as well. Um, one of the hypotheses is that our today's monetary system with usually having one currency to steer the society. So Switzerland has a Swiss franc, and the whole country, um, everything that happens in that country, um, the central bank can only influence by giving out more of Swiss francs, or taking back Swiss francs, or changing the interest rates. These are two variables, if you look at it from a, from a more systemic perspective. It's only two variables 
But the Swiss society is a very complex thing. There are a lot of different things happening, and, and if you give signals of these two types only, you will never manage to, to, um, to be this fine-grained in the steering and the incentivization that everything works out nicely. That's the problem. And now take EU 27 with one currency. The obvious problems are countries that, that fall into debt, but it's not that just Greece or, or other, uh, other uh, countries in the South are in debt. All of the countries are in debt because that's part of how the money system works today. And we can also think about, does that make sense? Should we, should we so? In the future, if, if, we, if we look into this in a, in a more mature uh, version in 10 years, 20 years from now, all of us would have digital wallets with dozens of different currencies. CO2 coin, pollution coin, corporation coin, community coin, all kinds of things. And you would have different balances on different uh, accounts, so to say. That would allow all of us to steer how we work together as a society in a much more fine-grained way. Because you would be incentivized to, to get out of the red on your CO2 balance, but it doesn't have to affect many of the others. You can, you can only change it here by trying to get more coins on this account, and then you are incentivized to do so. Um, so we would also expect in the long run that such a system would help, well, what would help, it would be a new monetary system, obviously. Um, an interesting question is what central banks and, and the two days fiat currencies role would be in that new world. But um, we would expect this, uh, the whole system of society and the economy and, and the different air domains to be more stable and more resilient because you have more players, because all of us would participate. And it would be communities who decide, let's create this coin because we think there's a local need or a regional need for, for planting trees, let's say, and we create this coin. It would be a bottom-up thing, not, not the government would decide, but we as communities would decide. And then the question is again, so, so it's sort of regional, regional currencies on steroids, uh, 2.0, something like that. Um, yeah, and it would change a lot of things because we would bring sort of democracy into the financial system, which is, I think, quite interesting. Um, these are a few of the projects. Um, I, I don't have the time to explain all of them. Uh, these are different blockchain systems. This is the symbol for Ethereum, which has been mentioned earlier. You, you don't see Bitcoin here because it doesn't matter whether Bitcoin is part of it or not. There are over thousands of different cryptocurrencies and you can just create new ones. It's, that's not the thing. IOTA is another interesting blockchain. Uh, well, it's not a blockchain technically, but it's an interesting system. Uh, related to IoT networks. Um, Oracleize um, tries to help with proving of, of real life events um, and prove them to make uh, a trusted link into the blockchain. The word for a trusted external data source is an oracle and therefore the company is called Oracleize. Um, these are storage solutions um, where they try to um, so think of a cloud storage. You have an idea what a cloud storage is. You can upload files and they are there. But all the cloud storages today belong to a company. You can just pick which company it is and you have to trust them, um, that their security is okay, that they don't look at your data, etc., etc. And something like the interplanetary file system, uh, quite modest title, <laughs> the interplanetary file system does away with all this. You upload your file, you get back a code, a hash code, and that's the, the, the address of the thing. It's not a path, slash path, slash, and, and, and something dot doc or something, but it's just this, you address by content rather than by, by location. It doesn't matter where the file is. It's nowhere and everywhere. It's just shared among the the participating nodes, all of us can participate. You build in a cryptocurrency that people are incentivized to share their hard disk. Of course it's encrypted. Of course you cannot just read the files of other people on your hard disk. So all these projects are, are, are there and people are very, very busy in, in trying this out and, and failing and trying again because it's also technically quite a challenging area, but it's really interesting because you can do stuff you couldn't do before. 
Um, this is really abstract. Uh, District OX is um, implementing a world of so-called DAOs. Uh, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. Maybe we should, um, I, I need to explain smart contracts and that in, in, in a minute. But there you can build digital communities, setting up their own rules, how their community work. Um, um, and of course, also decide on, on the incentive systems and, and the governance of that community inside the community. And there will be, at the moment, there, there's one running. Um, they are currently deciding and voting also about new proposals for new communities. And there will be many more in the future. Um, yeah, have a look. It's, it's really um, advanced uh, stuff. So, uh, and that's the three-line buzzwords filled title of, of the project I'm working on. Future ICT tries to um, move towards a much more sustainable world by enabling all of us to participate in the creation of money, in deciding what the money should be, what the purpose of the money is and what it should be used for. And yeah, create incentive systems to achieve eco-social goals um, collaboratively. So thanks, that's the first part of the presentation. Um, I hope you could understand a few things. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm happy to answer the questions as far as I can for the for the remaining of the time and I'm, I'm very sorry I will have to leave quite on time um, my, my taxi goes at 11 and I have to catch my train it takes me half a day to go back to the south of Germany <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> or north of Switzerland whatever <coughs> but, but please uh, share your questions advantage um, thank you for making sense of something that has been daunting me for months, if not years. Um, and with everything that is out there, there is a possibility for abuse. And the other thing is that governments, in the main, talk democracy but would rather be in control. So do you see that there will be regulation of this? It's, it's, it's evolving in its own way but it, and, and can be completely yeah. out of control. But governments don't normally like that sort of thing. But also there is the question of money laundering and abuse of these systems. So any so, comments on that? Course, I mean, of course, there's a lot of discussion among, uh, among regulators at the moment. They are mainly thinking about stuff like that and a few other large yeah, cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. that are sort of getting into the mainstream. And the answers of the countries are, 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 are quite different. It's, it's everything from supporting uh, to banning and everything in between. So uh, the governments do not know how to handle this because they don't understand how it works. And, and also they do not understand the implications. Um, but I think what I, what I can say in their defense at the moment is many governments try to have a steady hand in regulating it. Um, watching, observing, um, um, opening up sandbox areas where, where startups and, and communities can experiment, etc. But of course, whenever they sense that, and, and there's, it's, it's <coughs> in terms of investment area, it's the Wild West. You have no regulations. If you put your money there, change some euros or dollars and, and do something with Bitcoin or any of the other crypto, you are on your own. If you, either, so, 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 yeah. if you don't know what you're doing, it's a problem, uh, but even if you do know what you do, more or less, um, it's not so easy to, to always decide, is that a scam or is it a genuine great idea of a new cryptocurrency? And nobody will give you this objective answer because it's just a huge hype and frenzy as well. And of course there have been projects that just said, we do this, ICO is the catchword, uh, initial coin offering, um, we do something great, um, and for that we give out tokens because we will have this new incentive system. Uh, just send us your USD uh, spenden button. Yeah, just click here and, and we do that. And it works, but uh, maybe a year later the project is just nowhere and, and it's gone. It's gone. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, 
character appear first and then Karen? Um, the old money or the old incentivized system like loyalty partnered up with, with um, you know, um, pay, PayPal and all this payback, all these systems which incentivize consumers to do something extra. Yeah. The intelligence behind is really good, yeah. so it's, it's well developed. Can you use this type of intelligence or are these the enemies and are there, is their system so bad that you do not want to participate? Um, so the, the magic sauce of this whole ecosystem and the mantra everybody, br not everybody, but many, bring is decentralization. Okay. With the argument of saying, yes, you can have a benevolent service provider of some sorts, <coughs> but they're rare, they're really rare. And if they become more successful, it's becoming even more rare that they stay benevolent. Um, so, of course, you can, and, and, and companies or finance companies, service providers, experiment with, with this new technology, but they are staying in their old mindset. Sure, and, and old, they want to make money. Well, it, sure. Yeah. I mean, so it's not, a kind of, it's, yeah. of course, it's not a crime to, yeah. I mean, your company, yeah. you're in yeah. the system, obviously, your yeah. incentive is to make money. What this allows is any group to start with something similar to a bank, similar to an insurance, similar to a crowdfunding, similar to any of the systems you know about where people try to, to collect resources to achieve something together. And it just puts the tools in the hands of everybody. I understand there's a huge uh, learning curve concerning the technology, that's true, but that's a question of time. In the first year of the internet, also hardly anyone would understand, I mean, not even today, everybody <laughs> understands what's happening on the internet, and, and it's the same here. Even yeah, but but that's I mean, tools will become easier. People will are, are creating building blocks. Others can build upon. It it will become easier. There's already today a, a website where you can um, insure against uh, your flight being cancelled, which is usually a hassle with the the flight operator uh, to 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 get um, um, you uh, to redeem something. Um, and it's completely outside the system. No, no airplane uh, company, no, no airline was involved in that. It's just a group of people. They're collecting the information. Uh, the, the, they are collecting the information whether the flight took place. They collect your information. Of course, at the moment, I think it's not. They cannot really prove that it's you. But that's also a question of digital identity. It's a big topic in in blockchain as well. And. With a few clicks of a button, you have an insurance and you get automatically paid if your flight is cancelled. That doesn't happen today in any, in, in any of the airlines. Thank you. Um, I was, I'm understanding your discussion about incentivization being about wealth, effectively, or, or acquisition, or money, that it's a money equivalency, and yet we're all incentivized to do anything. I mean, you're probably not incentivized to come here today because you're going to get anything financial for it, you know, and so as, as fundraisers or as charity chairs or as trustees, people who are involved in the third sector, we have complex incentives yeah. for everything that we spend our time yeah. doing. Yeah. So I just wonder, where's the thinking on that complexity in terms of the rewards that you were talking about? So, uh, yes, it's an interesting question and research question as well. Will the introduction of external motivators in the form of coins of all sorts um, influence the intrinsic motivation people have to do something. Because it makes a difference whether I say uh, I plant 10 trees because I think the 10 trees should be planted and I think everybody should do that. Or um, if somebody comes to me and says I give you coins if you do it. Probably more people will do it because they get coins but the motivation may change. And, and, and this um, we have to try out and experiment with. On the other side, if you imagine the system I was presenting um, a few years down, down the line where um, you have, let's say, a few dozen of these different coins operating, maybe the meaning of money will change. Because if you, um, if you have this, this wallet with these dozens of currencies and you use them for different kinds of things to travel, to buy bread, to plant a tree, to, to do all, whatever you do the, the whole day through. Um, 
at one point the complexity will be on this level that, that the, the, you will not open your wallet and manually pick out one of the 50 currencies and, and do your transaction. The systems will do it. There will be so parts of AI being involved that also make recommendations, your personal AI, that make recommendations with which currency you should pay to overall maximize your, your portfolio, if you want to say so. But the more currencies you have, the less important the single currency becomes. 50 years from now, we are not talking about money if we would have this system, because you just have, how should I explain this? Um, you will have a digital representation of the relationships you have with others. And it will be semi-automatic. So it, it, it's, I will not tell you I give you five euros um, to do something. But we make this transaction, and my system and your system will decide which currency we'll exchange. Effectively, you don't even have to know. I mean, you can check it, of course, but it's, it's not of importance. Could I? Well, did I get the cross with this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, OK. Johannes. Yes, um, I, I can see that you can incentivize people to do the right thing with a new system that's democratic. Yeah. But uh, one of your first slides, you, you also showed that you, you need to, there needs to be a penalty if you do the wrong thing. Yeah. And doesn't that require authority? That's a great question. <laughs> it's really a great question. Um, <clears throat> can we think of incentive systems that prevent people from, from, from negative action? Let's, let's put it a bit oversimplified. Um, and that's an area of active research, to be honest. Um, yes, if you put uh, some sort of authority there, you can have penalties and, and the systems we know. Um, but as the magic sauce is decentralization, we try not to have this central authority. So what the project, I think one of the logos I wasn't, I wasn't talking about is Kleros. Kleros tries to, to create the distributive distributed justice or ju judicial, judicial system where they say, and, and it's not like, the concepts are not completely new. Ancient Greece was doing this as well. They were um, incentivizing citizens to participate in, in, in court trials as, as a jury. And there was a fancy system, you have to look up the word Kleros. Um, with, with tokens they put on, 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 on wooden things and then randomized, some were picked and they were the, 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 the sort of the judges for the day, etc. and they also got something for it. So the idea is, uh, um, can we organize this group of people to judge on a, on a disagreement the two of us have on some sort of transaction or on something, even on, 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 on a state of a situation? by creating an incentive system for all of you to participate, to be honest, and to be as fair as possible. So I'm not saying this will be the solution. It's, again, active area of research. Um, but people think about decentralizing this as well, the governance. And maybe District OX is also an interesting example again to look at. Last question from Jake. Oh, come on. The last question. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, who is working on this, linking this to? You showed a, a sustainable development goal chart. Yeah. Who's linking that? Is to UDEP? Is it uh, UNDP? Is so, that, are they working on this? Um, well, no, they are not working on this. <laughs> <laughs> um, if this, you mean the the, the project? It, yeah. It's us. Yeah. We are in touch with. Um, different bodies within the UN. It's not a small organization. Um, and also with, with different others. We had workshops in Frankfurt with, with people from the Central Bank and, and National Bank, etc. So we try to bring this out and, and open up the discourse around it because it's, I think, quite advanced in, 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 in putting into question certain, some of the assumptions we, we all have today. Find open doors. They are not closed. Oh, they are not closed. They are not closed uh, because we... I guess coming with a research badge is, is kind of, um, but it depends. Um, I made the mistake in this very workshop in, in Frankfurt uh, to start in the first slide, I don't know why I did that, uh, uh, to say, well, probably uh, having something like only this euro doesn't help. We have larger problems. And of course, that was not the best entry slide. I thought, let's, let's come with the systemic argumentation first, but, but it didn't work out very nicely. 
Um, so, because the, this person for the two hours of the, of the workshop was at least half a dozen time come up, but you don't need the cryptocurrency, we have the euro. <laughs> you can do it with the euro, you can do it with the euro, and you can't. Um, so, but we try to do s different things. Um, so, for example, um, 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 uh, parallel to COP23, uh, there was a hack for climate uh, taking place with um, hundred and something participants, and we were also there, um, bringing this as, as a challenge in and, and being a partner of the event. We will be there in Katowice as well this year. Um, yeah, so we, we, we are actively looking for, for contact and, and, and discussion, but of course it's not a UN project, yeah. um, we just try to. And same with supply chain or, um, auditors. Oh, sorry? Supply chain auditors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Could, yeah. Could, could be there as well, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. At the moment, I would say we are we are more. So, so the goal of the project is to show a concept that this could be done and could work. Also, to build software or stitch software together, probably is a better term, uh, to to also show in the demonstrator that this actually could work. So, at the moment, we are very very much researching the landscape of all the different startups and initiatives um, who, who work on certain parts of it and try to bring these together to build this demonstrator. And as soon as we have the demonstrator, which is, can show it actually would work, you may not like it, but it could work, and it would happen independently of you if people like it. So, why not join? So, that would be the argument. And that would be when? Well, so the project is um, two more years. Um, but I, I guess we can show stuff uh, before the end of the project, so, yeah. Absolutely fascinating. I think we're going to need to ask you back in a couple of years. <laughs> or maybe a couple of months at this point. Probably years will be too late, yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you so much for your time and, and for opening our minds to this extraordinary phenomenon. I haven't got time to join us for a little refreshment before you go, I'm, otherwise I'm sorry, we realise you're up against yeah, so, the So, yeah, I, I will have to leave in like five minutes. Okay. So, very sorry for that. Very much.